Yeah, I was very lucky to have been given a Fulbright grant in 1961. They paid extra for me to go to Chicago to attend a conference of all American education professors, which was a very big privilege. And when we got there, oh, they said, oh, you are from East Africa. Why don't you prepare us a 15 minutes talk at breakfast to tell us about girls' education in East Africa? So that was an experience I wouldn't have got if I was not a Fulbright scholar. It was an opportunity for exposure in my industry at a very, very high level and at a very young age. And I really credit the experiences that I had as a student, but also as a, an international person traveling for the first time, and then also being able to work in an international uh, setting. Those have been really strong foundations for the person that I am today. When you meet an American now, or you're, you're in a gathering, or you're talking to people, and you say, you know, I'm a Fulbright scholar, everybody goes, oh, you know, which means, which puts you again in a privileged sort of uh, status. The science lecturers are very few in this country. And so the Fulbright scholars have been invaluable in terms of building up the capacity and training people in the sciences in particular. It's wonderful to be a Fulbright scholar. It's really wonderful because whatever course you take, the intentions of the Fulbright scholarship are given to you straight. I think overall, this scholarship um, was established to make sure that the skills it gives to different people should be skills that should be translated into transforming societies, making sure people are comfortable where they live, making sure systems work, making sure that we are part of a cycle that creates a better world. One thing that I really gained uh, from my Fulbright uh, studies at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health was as soon as I came back home after my uh, Fulbright scholarships, immediately that year, that, that was 2012, I did win a big grant with Grand Challenges Canada. Uh, this grant was to develop uh, a counseling intervention that uh, is currently being used to treat depression in persons living with HIV AIDS. I learned that you know don't start it if you won't do it okay don't say you will when you want. I learned about the fact that America operates on a system of trust they're not going to come running after you but you see they expect that if you give your word that's it that's your word. With this full pride Fulbright program, I was able not only to research these mental health problems of mass trauma in Uganda, but also in Rwanda, uh, in Ethiopia, uh, and in West Africa. And we were able eventually to begin to train students and interest them in actually doing research so as to help our people who have been affected by war, who have massive mental health problems. And because Fulbright enabled me to associate with others in this search, we have been able to do a lot more to start clinics to help patients who have been affected by war in many parts of Africa, in Uganda, in Kenya, uh, in Rwanda, in Liberia, in West Africa. And we even started a journal uh, called the African Journal of Traumatic Stress, uh, a copy of which I have here which goes to investigate and show um, these problems as they spread on the African continent. Actually, when I went to the U.S., I happened to, to, to visit the University of North Texas. I was officially in Memphis, but the program entailed that you visit other states, other universities for different presentations. And I visited the UNT, University of North Texas, where I found a professor who was researching in back cloth kind of inspired me to come back and move that particular character to another level and that's one of the uh, the sector and the discipline that I have put my weight in to preserve, to 
promote and take it to a level where it can be appreciated globally. If it wasn't for the Fulbright program, I would not have been a complete person of who I am now. Because the program itself made me reinvent myself. Thank you.